You're tied. Yeah. I want to flag something. Golden Guardians, this is the first time we have seen a LeBlanc locked in all day. I know that 13-13, this was the post static shiv nerf apparently there's some people that are still running leblanc with the static shiv it's not consistent but some people still like to play with it so we might see it in this game yeah i don't think you'll see the static shiv anymore on ap carries like uh, leblanc who cheated it by being able to jump forward you had the ap ratio which was also buffed on minions they knocked the ap ratio removed that interaction and reduced the uh, extra scaling for the, the minion damage so it, she was able to abuse it quite a bit. You can still yeah. just build the regular LeBlanc. You can just you can just rush Ludens, right? Yeah, like exactly. you don't you don't need to go static shiv anymore. Yeah. So I mean, it's possible we could see it. I mean, people are still building it for sure. But like, should they be? I mean, people are building that, some. That's where I'm leaning. People are like, have some cooked builds sometimes. Yeah. You know, not in the LCS. Only the best builds here. <laughs> I don't know what region you're watching. Yeah, I mean sometimes all of them don't actually. Even read <laughs> you know. Now Golden Guardians are gonna go ahead and lock in this Aphelios for Stick Stay wow. and the Cassante for. Oh, uh, Licorice more than likely. Uh, yeah, it should be at this point since LeBlanc should be going mid lane. Now Cloud9, they have their solo lanes already known at this point. So they can either go for a jungle combo or support lock-in at this point. Very interesting first phase of the draft where you have all three carry positions kind of locked in for Golden Guardians, just waiting on the jungle and support, which are usually two of the things you see earlier on. Yep. Uh, especially, you know, Aphelios got tapped a little bit this, this patch. Um, you do Whoa! see... All right, that okay. is Berserker laying down the gauntlet. Yeah. Yeah, he is one of the only ADs in the LCS that really does go back to the Draven every so often. I had some really good games on it in spring that mm -hmm. people were kind of popping off about. The FlyQuest Decider. Oh, yeah, I think it was the FlyQuest Decider. And Sven also had really good plays on Renata. I believe in that game, he was playing with the Renata combo. So uh, it would be interesting to see what they want to pair with it. But, you know, if you're just going to keep slapping down Aphelios, Aphelios has gotten even more nerfs on this patch. He's been nerfed a number of times over the last bunch of patches. So, yes. you know, he's not the strongest laner anymore. They were pro focus nerfs we'll see if berserker can pair something really aggressive with sven and really try to punish this that's what i was going to say is uh with the fact that the supports have been held now you can actually give sven last pick if you want it to make sure you get the most advantageous matchup possible to start snowballing the draven low key you can also just play any draven possible i actually think it's it's not it's not a bad kill lane so um there is potential to flex things around but of course any also really good into leblanc so it's not like they have to swap things over renata that was the combo you know i called out that they actually played last split with it that really was successful so i do think as much as people are kind of memeing about like ah enchanters are dead Sven can't play you know he's gonna be screwed there's actually a lot of really good enchanters still some of them have been you know, knocked down a bit but uh, there are a lot of options you do have here and milio i think is actually a really strong pairing with it yeah. even though people do think about the hard engage supports with the draven some of the enchanter pairings are even more oppressive you know in the 2v2 because draven just walks forward with a shield and you can't win the trade ever yeah I and mean, especially if golden guardians go for a full dive composition janna's really good and just being able to deny a lot yeah. of those engages that they would want to look for now we talked earlier about how a lot of the skirmishing junglers like Vi, Wukong, Kindred have been nerfed on this patch, and it's, it's giving rise to a lot of the tank junglers that did not get touched, like Sejuani and Maokai. But Blabber's gonna say, I don't care about the nerfs. I'm still gonna go for Viego because this guy was not touched, and he's still strong in my hands. Well, I think especially with the comp that they've drafted, Viego is exactly. all about getting the first kill. Your first three are Renekton, Annie, and Draven. Like, that is upfront damage, right? So if they can't kill one person at the start of the fight, the problem is not the Viego. The problem is everything else is going on. And it's a very early game focused team comp. There's not a ton of scaling built in here. So you are actually looking to run over Golden Guardians in the early game. You can see no surprise given what Azale's talking about, what, what C9 comp wants to do. GG takes the Braum to provide a bit more frontline, be able to block some abilities, kind of stop that dive as it's coming in. Just and are we man. getting... Well, Poppy was banned, so we're getting the uh, the River Staple, the Jarvan, arguably yeah. his best champion since he's joined the LCS. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Staple, like, it was like a Staple when he came in on Dig. I don't feel like he's really played it that much, you know, since actually changing teams, but definitely when he first came in, this is what he was picking every single game, and he was running over teams. He was hard carrying games on Dig when they didn't really have a lot going for them. He does have 24 games on it in his career, 75% win rate. Uh, it's his highest win rate champion, basically behind, like, Nidalee and some of... His highest win rate champion Ooh. besides the champions that are yeah, I thought these were going to have lower game counts when I looked at the other ones. I'm like, actually, it's 16 games in Italy, so he's just good at carry junglers as well. But he won a lot. In he his won a lot of games, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Underestimated that. <laughs> the last pick up here for Cloud9 was that Soraka. They were looking to see maybe it was going to be a Thresh, but instead, Ooh. now you have healing on top of a very early kill lane that Draven has, and so you have sustain on top of sustain if he gets that early Vam Scepter in his lane, or if he just wants to go for full-on kill pressure with like a BF Sword back or a Noon Quiver back, this guy 
it's going to be so oppressive to lane again. Yeah, Soraka is one of the best laning supports if you're able to land those Qs, get those set up with your E as well. You can kind of lock people in place and stop them from dodging out during the dive, flashing critical abilities. You just go for that insta silence and then combo it with an Annie stun or Viego when he goes in. It makes it very easy to actually find kills in their turrets. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's also just like, the only thing you really are scared of when you are playing Soraka is hard engaged supports, right? So when they blind... Expecting River to hover and look for gains constantly on this bottom side of the map, because if you do not do anything to help Stick say uh, early on in this Aphelios, he's just going to get run over. Yeah, it's, it's kind of telegraphed game plan for both teams here, where it's like C9 want to go bot lane. We want to defend bot lane. And so C9 being able to get wards out will be very important to make sure that, like you said, Soraka is not getting ganked, because that is the one threat, is if yeah. a J4 comes flying in, you give a jump target for Braum to hop onto, you can chain CC her and kill her very easily. And so both teams have a huge incentive to make sure they get lots of wards out early around bot lane. Well, it's also my expectation. I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I feel like Blabber could just very easily go top to bot and just be there and just standing behind them, right? Because yep. it's like getting ganked really is the concern. Um, and yes, you can try to get wards, but you have to get really He's deep wards. Because if you put a river ward, honestly, J4 can just walk through lane. You know, Huhi just Ws to a minion, exhausts you, autos you, Qs you, whatever. Jarvan comes in, follows it up. And that can be really, really problematic uh, for Zven and Berserker. Uh, so I'm expecting Viego starting top, pathing towards bot. Uh, we'll see exactly where River wants to path, but it is looking like he's going to go opposite. He's going to go um, bot up towards top. So uh, this could mean it's going to be difficult for GG's bot lane. I will say, though, River's J4 does not do the traditional True. path very yep. often. He is very creative. Yep. He loves hopping walls early, level two cheese ganks, or just doing full clear bot sides to like a uh, another attack on bot lane again. We'll see where he wants to go. And look at those two wards already. Is that actually getting swept? Oh, it is. He's sweeping it. Um, I, I want to double check that. Yeah, he swept yeah, who the ward. He, who so who he started it. that. So they actually spotted that ward. So I was going to say, because they're actually respecting this, right? They did two early wards on bot side, knowing that he could just go red, you know, and come through, uh, you know, over the, over the dragon wall, things like that. But I was going to say, hey, you can't do that because of the ward. They're going to replace the ward. So this is really nice. But still, if who he can actually get up here and tag them, but he's only level one. So like, this is tough. He's got to look for a Q flash basically, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. I think if he was level two and he had WQ, I think then you can make it happen. But Cloud9 playing smart around it. They had an early ward there. They rewarded when it got swept. They're just respecting what their opponent's win conditions are in this lane. Really good scouting out of Cloud9. The ward to cover the exit from the Dragon Pit. Another potential J4 mm -hmm. path there. Uh, very big commitment to use all those wards that they wanted around the bot side. But, you know, they identify what we did, which is like, this is how you disrupt the bot lane. Make sure we isolate it as much as possible. They cover that one. Uh, this does mean, of course, that top lane is probably going to be quite a bit isolated if all this attention keeps going down to the bot side. But look at Blabber, right? Like, he's going to be way ahead of the pace. So Gory now needs to try to find something mid because he's still on three camps. Blabber's going to be done six camps before Jarvan starts his, his fourth. So, like, this is an issue. He's spending so much time here. He needs to find something because Blabber is going to start, you know, getting getting eyes on it. This is not an issue. This is his power zone. This is, where, <laughs> this is the comfort zone, where he wants to be. It was off screen, but there was a flash for flash traded. River went for MS. He burned MS's flash. So now you have at least a summoner advantage for Gory in the mid lane. If River can look for a repeat gank, there's a lot of pressure. But as you two already highlighted, Blabber's really insanely ahead of the curve. He's already going to be looking for vision down on the next cycle of camps from River's bot side jungle and setting up for that bottom scuttle crab. Yeah, absolutely. He will get this crab. We'll see if he can actually go straight, you know, bot to top and look for double crab start. A uh, nice look there from River. You know, it's an easy flash from MS, but when you spend that much time mid, you absolutely have to do something, and it's going to be shift from Gory. So still he's actually it. going for it anyway. I am not the biggest fan of this. We'll see if he can actually make it work. I mean, it is still totally fine for Poke and Prod. He can go Shiv Ludens. You can still do the full kind of old school build. It's way weaker, though, definitely. Um, you're not going to be getting those stacks charged up as fast. You're not going to be clearing out waves as fast. It's not that it's, you know, completely unviable, but I don't think it's like some secret tech OP build anymore. No, it's like, for me, it's if you want to leave an auto attack combo into your, your trading pattern anyways, you can just go Lich Bane or something else, which now is a higher ratio. It's only the wave clear that's like the small advantage over, over Lich Bane, but Lich Bane has better base stats with actual AP ratios built into it as well. And at the end of the day, like, someone needs to kill them, right? Like, you're, you're a two-threat team. You're playing Aphelios and LB. And Aphelios is in a lane that is going to be absolutely impossible in the 2v2. So Aphelios is going to be behind. If you have Gory going for Shiv, I'm kind of just like, where's your damage? Bro? His name is Licorice. <laughs> His name is Cassante. And he is up 2 CS. True. There you go. Nice. You're not wrong. <laughs> And during all this time, River finally got a chance to recall, but because Blabber's already been out on the map first with that earlier buy, he's just 
stronger by a larger margin. And they have the tempo to be able to look for plays on the bottom side of the map first. They do have to be careful about this mid lane since Gory still has flash advantage over MS. He's not going to have the same lane Fryo, but Blabber can always choose to influence it since he'll be hitting level six before River. Yeah, absolutely. When MS does his six, it uh, can become a little bit problematic. You know, of course, you do have Fleet, so you're going to have a little bit of sustain here on the LeBlanc like you do not normally, but, um, you know, it can be difficult. We know these first strike Annies are just going to drop tivers on you on cooldown, look to get that chunk out, look to take lane prio, and try to recover from there. Zven has been tagged by quite a few spells in a row, and if you can dodge these Soraka Qs and keep hitting him with the Braum Q, keep hitting him uh, with poke from the Aphelios, eventually he will get whittled down. That's the kind of situation he's in now. Yep, starting to get a little low on the mana as well. Overall, not too bad for Golden Guardians. Just a small gold deficit. This pressure will go to the Dragon to start that stacking for Cloud9. They are the fastest Dragon team in the league, keeping that one up, snagging an Infernal. C9 looking for a contest, but I don't think they're seriously going to do anything. Uh, the one thing about controlling the Annie's Flash is it stops any potential roams uh, from coming in, so it does buy a little bit of pressure relief around your bot lane, even though it was a gank that went mid. Uh, so that is helping control a little bit. Also, Berserker has completely free stacks right here. He has 133 stacks if that counter on the screen is right in six minutes. Like, that is ridiculous. So he's just double axing, you know, stacking basically at maximum efficiency the entire time. Uh, and that is going to mean if he gets that cash out, it is going to be a crazy big one. So this Draven, as it often does in games, becomes such a focal point for both teams. For Cloud9, it's all about getting him the cash out. And for his opponents, it's all about denying that cash out, getting that kill, taking off the 75% of the stacks, which can really put him back. But, you know, Draven is so hard sometimes to deny the kill from when he is free stacking like this, because that is adding damage to your ult execute, right? So if you get to a certain point, all of a sudden you just need the guy like 30% HP and yeah. the Draven ult's just gonna one pop you. It's one thing that the Braum can help with though, with his ultimate being able to break that, um, stop that from coming through. You can negate some of that damage. So as mm -hmm. long as it's on you who he's targeting, you can have a bit of counterplay against that, which is another thing that the Braum can do well against this enemy team comp. Just pointing out now that MS's flash is coming back up, which means that Golden Guardians never really found an opportunity to punish the lack of anti flash down in the mid lane. At most, it's gotten Gory a little bit of oh, BS, but down, just actually. right before the timer, they get the Cataclysm down. He's got nowhere to run. I may have jinxed it for MS, but for Golden <laughs> Guardians, baby, they get the first blood. Golden right Guardians, Rafa pops off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was just right on the timer, right? You know, it was up in a couple seconds there, so it was a, just about the last possible moment he could go for it. He hit six, and as soon as he hit six, he just immediately goes mid. They do get that kill. Unfortunately, Gory was pushed back enough that they couldn't just guarantee that he would get the kill. So the kill does go over to Jarvan, uh, but still great pressure through mid and any, you know, is a matchup that a lot of people do like into Blanc, but he's actually down nearly 20 CS because he's missing so much of this wave. Like, not only did he die, he died on a stacked wave. I'm actually just legitimately surprised that River was able to hit six before Blaver. I wonder if just all the time spent on doing he was the dragon. Leeching XP as yeah. Well. He was uh, when you're sitting around mid, you are leeching XP pretty heavily from, from your mid lane. So I think he actually soaked a lot there. Oh, oh. the all out that might have been dangerous for Fudge, but he turns right on back. Then the Topo strike cast, but it's not enough as Blaver comes in to save Fudge, and they get the kill. It looks so good for Licorice for a second, getting the flip back, but does get finished off by Blaver's ultimate. One for one up in the top side. A lot of flashes traded. He lost his, Fudge lost his, but a small advantage going to C9 in the top side. Yep, gonna be able to get that kill, and you get Blabber ahead of the curve here. He already has the Hearthbound Axe, uh, so it's gonna be nice. And if he can get towards that Triforce really quick, River moving out on the map, is gonna be starting up this Herald, uh, which does feel okay since he does have some prowl through mid, but. Licorice has no TP, you know, Fudge is going to be coming back out of the map, so there is some risk to it. And you can see Blabber is moving towards mid. I think they're going to potentially look for a play here, but Blabber doesn't want to spend too much time. His camps are back up, so he's just going to continue clearing down towards bot uh, and getting down to play around this Draven. Yeah, we talked a lot about how much attention there would be going to the bot side, but you're also pretty happy to leave it isolated, like you said, with the Draven, because of how you can stack this up and get a bigger payout later. You don't need to kill them level three, level four, level five. You can just build stacks up until you get to these dragon situations and then go for one big execute. And uh, it's something that C9 has definitely done a little bit more this game with just focusing on warding out rather than making plays around the Draven. Yeah, I mean, the early game has been really solid from Golden Guardians. On honestly, I thought there was going to be way more of a CS advantage down in this, in this bot lane 2v2, you know, in, in isolation. I did expect uh, that Sven and Berserker will be able to create much more. They're going to look for you all in. Okay, Glitchal Fissure hits Berserker, but they look for the winner's bite on Sven, so not quite the same target for who he's target selection here. Stick say 
Not going to feel confident about trying to follow the all-in. Yeah, not really going to happen. It was good silence. Gets thrown down. River, though, up towards top side. Cataclysm on Fudge. They know that his flash is down, and River knows that there's no way out for that crocodile. Oh, man. River is feeling himself yet again on the Jarvan pick, knowing all the angles. Gets that one with Fudge's flash down. His ultimate's still not on up yet. Does feel like Golden Guardian's doing a very good job tracking yeah. timers. People tend to get like a little loose when it's just five seconds away. Do I want to lose this creep? No, I'll walk forward. These sorts of things. And right there again, Fudge did not have his ultimate available to survive that kind of burst that might come through. Yeah, River really nicely done. He'd already used the slice and dice in the trade as well. So River finds that timing, has the Gore Trigger completed. So River off to a great start here on the Jarvan. You know, two and zero, has both their kills. And he's going to be looking to continue keeping that pressure up as you always want to on this Jarvan. Uh, he's cleared right back out towards top. Aphelios has made the swap up towards that side. So Ooh, likely they're just going to drop Harold and try to make a, a play up towards that top lane for that first tower. I really like this macro play out of Golden Guardians. You've done a good job through the lane phase so far, but you do want to start breaking out of this lane phase. 1-3-1 one, one setups, gank setups like this. Be tricky. Fudge almost goes down. Still has Dominus. Did not pop it, but he's going to be pushed off the tower here. That's the important thing is they're going to get full tower, right? Like they're not hard committing to try to get the kill because they don't actually need to. You just farm up the Krugs while Aphelios gets solo gold on plates. Then after Aphelios gets a plate or two, you come, you drop the Herald, guaranteed first turret. Licorice is defending on bot side. Gory is still pushing through mid. Is creating the advantage. Has that shift done. And MS is nowhere close to his mythic. So Golden Guardians looking really, really good. Yeah, putting the fleet foot work shift to work in mid lane. The fact that you get to get this free wave clear, get this free poke down and have a little bit more sustain than the Annie. He's been isolated this whole time, up farm and now grabbing his own turret plates while you make plays on the top side. Huge stuff out of Golden Guardians here. 3,000 gold in the lead with what we thought was going to be a dominant C9 early game. Yeah, it's just been great problem solving from Golden Guardians. They answered the fact that bot lane, okay, we can't really tackle uh, the Draven by ourselves. So we're going to look on the top side of the map. Punishing mid lane, no flash, right before the timer came back up. Punishing Fudge as well. And the fact that they shifted Stixa away from the losing lane of Berserker and Sven, it's almost uh, very similar to what Evil Geniuses did in Spring 2022. They would shift the bottom lane ahead uh, whenever it wasn't going well, and if they they got 6A right onto the power curve just fine. So even though Berserker still has all these stacks, he hasn't cashed out yet. And as long as Golden Guardian's first fight and point of contact with Draven goes well and they shut him down, then Cloud9's investment goes to goes to put. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, we I was expecting, I'll speak for myself, I was expecting that Cloud9 with this draft, uh, with just their early game play overall, that they would be creating a big advantage and that the Draven stacks would be kind of used as a, that final dagger, right? If he gets the stacks, the game's just over. But now they're in a situation where it's like, he needs to get the stacks or the game is over the other way, right? Yeah. Like they are very far down. He has 340 stacks, which is just a tremendous amount. You know, it's 2.5 gold per stack plus the base cash out. So it's a huge influx of gold, but even that is not gonna be nearly enough to actually close that gold lead. And we've been talking about surviving the C9 dive from you know the, the Golden Guardians perspective, flip it around. There's not much peel on the Golden uh, no. C9 side. You know you have the Soraka Silence, you have her heals, but look at the dive. Cassante, <laughs> J4, LeBlanc, even Braum can get in there. Like you can blow Draven up very easily. And so as you start getting to these neutral objective standoffs, they have to do a very good job marking their flanks and making sure that there's not actually anyone who can blow up the Draven. Yeah, absolutely. I do think that you know if you send too heavily on the Draven, it can be problematic. You know Soraka can keep you alive a little bit with the ulti. Then all of a sudden you're fighting through Tebers, you're fighting through Viego, you're fighting through an ulti. Right next in. So there are tools I think Cloud9 are still going to have there to turn it around. Um, but their only real advantage is these two dragons. And I think we are kind of marching towards an inevitable fight here at this third dragon. The Cole Cash Out you know, is done for Berserker. He has his Triforce, he has his Rated Dirk on top. So he is at a really big power spike right now. And I think, you know, three minutes. Three minutes from now, we could be seeing what is a pivotal game fight. Yeah, I feel like so much is going to come down to marking the LeBlanc. She gets free poke and chip damage onto the Draven. It's very hard to play, but hold on here. Oh, potentially a knockup from River, but it's not a much damage follow-up for. He's waiting in the shadows before he wanted to commit, but Blabber is able to get out just fine because he has Soraka in his back. Was he scared of like an anti-flash coming in with Tibbers or something? River flashed out so early there. Like Ori might be forced to flash here if he doesn't have distortion back up, but he gets it back up off. Uh, down. C9's bot lane was still in bot side, whereas Golden Guardians had recalled, and so I think River was scared of getting stunned up under turret and ending up in a, or, uh, an enemy jungle and ending up in a 4v2. So Look at him out. That's his flash gone. Cataclysm, but uh, Huhi with the flash, Glacial Fissure under the tower, and 6A with the green gun has the long range to finish him off. Yeah, even through Sven's ulti there, they couldn't keep him alive. So again, River forced to use his flash, but finds another play around mid. MNS has been pretty heavily targeted. Gory was laning great in the 1v1, and River has been there to slam home those advantages, so Cloud9 really getting into some trouble here. 
It's starting to look tough. Yeah, we're talking about all these team fights that might happen. River just keeps finding these yeah. isolated targets to, to jump on top of, and there they get it again. Gold C9 being a little loose with the fact that they just forced a flash. They're kind of going back to their lanes, and they're not ready for Golden Guardians to just force another play. And it's not like Berserker is like a huge threat at the moment, but the fact that Golden Guardians have been so careful about not finding fights where Berserker is around. They're always finding picks where Berserker is not, and that ensures that they avoid the potential disaster fall if Berserker were able to cash in. I mean, his cash in is going to be over 1,200 gold if he gets it, right? So that is a massive influx of gold, uh, plus obviously the kill that he would get. So they are going to have to be careful about this, but they are kind of haphazardly starting this up. Renekton is not there. Eminus is not there yet. So C9 do have to be respectful of the fact that Golden Guardians are collapsing and have the extra man until Eminus can actually get here. And he doesn't have ulti available, so the stun would have to be a committed from just a Q or something else. Instead, Golden Guardians are securing the Rift Herald. Teleport is coming in from Gory, and Fudge is not committing his teleport, so Cloud9, they just need to get out of there. Heartbreaker from Blabber ensures that he gets out over the wall safely, but you can already tell that Cloud9, they're the ones on the back foot because they're afraid of giving Golden Guardians the huge snowball. C9 looking like they were just poking around there. Fudge had TP, but actually stayed on the bot side, continuing to push. Gory committed his teleport as well, so one down on the side of GG gives C9 a small teleport advantage for the next couple of minutes. We'll see if they are able to exploit that at all, or if teams just reset and charge right back to this third dragon that's spawning in 10 seconds. Yeah, it could be a play around the dragon. At the end of the day, it's, it's not a bad exchange of gold, but with Herald in the pockets of Golden Guardians, mid-tier one is dead, so Cloud9 are going to lose even more map control. You know, as soon as Golden Guardians does elect to actually drop that, assuming they do go mid, um, we'll see what the buys are going to be as the dragon is now live. And I think Cloud9, you know, likely do want to fight for this uh, because this is really their only advantage at this point in the game. You can see Fudge moving over. It's Ben trying to move down and get some vision, but it's MS in trouble. And MS still doesn't have flash from before, so Licorice is taking this time. However, uh -oh. it's a stun from the anti Timbers, and Blabber's coming in, but he didn't even need Blabber there. MS fights him all by himself. I mean, you go all out. You're disrespecting that damage. He still had Tibbers after that. So you're, you're cutting yourself in half health. You're taking away those resistances. If Annie had already spent her full kit, like if you'd already Tibbers and used your spells, then you go all out, you win that for sure. But when you put yourself that low, yeah, Eminus is behind. He's not that behind. He can still do some damage. Bit disrespectful there by Licorice, feeling himself too much, maybe thinking, you know, even if he was able to find that kill, you have Blabber coming up because they were not contesting the dragon. Oh, Glacial Fissure lands on the Blabber, but he still has a flash to play with and Heartbreaker, so he's not in real danger. It just guarantees that the charge goes undeterred. As Cloud9, maybe teleporting to the bottom side of the map. Fudge could be in danger, needs help taking out Gory here, and MNS is teleported right on in. He doesn't have flash, and he doesn't have a stun available, and Gory's pushed off. Good restraint out of Gory. I've seen versions of Gory who decide they want that kill, says, <laughs> I got flash, I got fancy feet, I can make this work. But uh, this time, playing a little reserved. I feel like Golden Guardians is just approaching this game with a level of seriousness that you don't always see out of regular season games where people can play a little faster, a little looser. But we talked about how lopsided this rivalry is. You saw the, <laughs> the tally from the fans, you know, was not very excited towards Golden Guardians. So I think for them, this is a, a bit of a statement game to say like, hey, we really are in contention. Licorice in the interview was saying like, we really can be one of the best teams in the LCS, and they need to start gaining that confidence on the Rift. Absolutely. With Cloud9 dropping a couple games of the last couple weeks, you win this game, you're tied, right? You were tied for a second in the LCS. So uh, that is, you know, where they want to be right now, where they want to try to move towards. So we'll see if they can close this one out. Uh, the gold lead has stagnated somewhat, and it is just going to be this constant discussion about, you know, can Draven get the stacks or can you shut him down? Because there is still a window of opportunity here for Cloud9 if they can get that massive cash in, you get that big injection of gold in Berserker that he could potentially take over a game like this, but it's not going to be easy. You, know, you talk about all the tools that Golden Guardians have to pressure him, and it's just going to be armor stacking, it feels like. You, know, you can see Thornmail, uh, Iceborne. The Annie is behind, and that's the solo AP threat. So if Annie is behind, well, you just kind of stack armor and run at the Draven. He already has a last whisper just to combat that. And if he was able to get the cash in, then he would be able to spike with the Lord Dominic's regards on top of it. But if they lose that fight and he doesn't have that gold, then I mean, you've seen Draven in the late games try to hit tanks. It does nothing, man. It just cannot cut through all the health and all the armor. So Cloud9, they are in a point where they are 
just desperate to find a winning fight where Berserker can get a guaranteed cash out at this point. Yeah, and the fact that the dragon stacking has already been broken by Golden Guardians means that, you know, they can back off if they don't like the look. If someone gets chunked out while walking in ahead of time, they're not immediately forced to keep fighting, and they can kind of protect that cash in from Berserker if they ever start getting low. And it feels like they don't really have a great answer for LeBlanc in the side lanes either, right? Gory was already winning out in the 1v1 against Fudge, and he's forcing a TP as a response. So if Gory can just play through sides, that's going to force Cloud9 back further. It'll make them be late to these dragons, but they are looking for a fight now. Blabber went way too early. Yeah, and he has Flash and has Heartbreaker, but he still might be punished by it. River waits until he uses all of his cooldowns before committing with the Flash and the Cataclysm. Blabber is gone, and just right before the Baron is spawning, maybe Golden Guardians can tap it and see what will happen for Cloud9. Yeah, absolutely. Like, at the very least, go look, right? Look, you can try to go for a turn if Cloud9 want to come and fight. Licorice is moving up. They're very least going to start it. Blabber is down. He has no flash. He has no quick way out. Does have those hex gates to try to get there a little bit quicker. But Gory is zoning who he is zoning. And it's just a two-man star here with River and Six A. Berserker's walking on up. Sven and gets Vision into the pit, but they don't have a smite to be able to contest it with. It would be a miracle if somehow Cloud9 stole it, but River, if he has smite, they should be able to take it out. But Berserker cashes out as Hui was trying to give his life so they could guarantee the Baron, but giving a kill to Draven might have spelled disaster for Golden Guardians, even if they get the Baron buff after they've lost two members in the trade. They're going to look for more, and Stixie's got nowhere to run. That call might have just been what the end of Golden Gold. Big mistake by Golden Guardians there. They had the kill on Blabber. They were just trying to leave Huhi out as frontline to buy space for the Baron, but that actually led them right to cut off the escape of Stixay as well, handing over multiple deaths, only a couple people escaping with the Baron buff here. You can just see Huhi wanting to be a distraction, but gets destroyed by that ultimate out of Berserker. It says 300, but it was a thir yeah, 1370 on the cash in there, Sheesh. plus the 300. He got another kill after that. So in pocket after this fight, he had over 3,000 gold. So he's going to go back, buy a full item. But that being said, still, the Baron gold did go to, to Golden Guardians. And that actually just barely put him ahead of where 6A is. So you know they were so far down that, again, the cash in from this point is not like a guaranteed win. The cash in is what you need to have a hope to have anything going for it's you because Golden safe. Guardians are dominating. Yeah, there was obviously doesn't win you the game, but it does give you that influx of gold that you were just sitting on yep. hoping didn't go to waste later. So that is a big dub for C9. Keeps that competitive and now gives them inside track to start out this dragon. And now it is less dangerous for Berserker to die in these fights because he's already gotten the big cash out from the first 20 minutes of the game. Golden Guardians still have Baron buff on two members here, but they want to fight this dragon. They want to push Cloud9 off. 4,000 HP on it already. Blabber has Smite available. Can he clutch it out from River? The EQ comes in. Blabber secures it, but a Cataclysm on multiple members of the Cloud9 And Blabber is forced to run. Yeah, Cloud9 trying to fight it out, but can't make it happen. Berserker had no flash, so no way to get out of that Cataclysm. And Blabber did get his first reset, but was not the one he wanted. Stixay had the summoners, was able to stay alive. So Golden Guardian's getting another win. There's no tier tower, uh, tier two tower here either. So Stixay's gonna be able to take mid. They're just gonna continue chasing Blabber, and they can get even more. Despite the Baron oopsie, Golden Guardians is right back on train. 5,000 gold lead. C9 critically did win that smite steal. So that does give them a potential to get soul in four minutes. When we go back and look at this, though, you have to see the J4 engage the three. We can, man, so we can listen into the Golden Guardians comms here. Just slowly. Yeah. yeah. I need a flash. I don't know. I need a flash. I'm looking to flash on Draven. Protection? Oh. Yep. I need us. Any, 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 any. Look, 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 look. Yep. yep. Draven, Draven. Draven. I'm low, I'm low, I'm low, I'm low. Got right? I'm ulting two, ulting two. I have so much, I have so much. Vega still up. Nice. Vega, don't nice. place, don't place. I mean, you can hear the comms there as we're going to spend that. You know, oh, we just saw man. him in the replay have to blow his flash. Um, but they called out, MNS, you know, had no flash. Danny had no flash. The Draven had no flash. Liquor's very early said he's looking to flash onto the Draven. You know, when they went forward, 
Stick safe flashes in. We saw the immediate response flash from Fudge to try to push him out, but he can't actually finish him off. And with Draven down, with any, you know, getting pushed out, there just wasn't enough damage left in the tank for Cloud9. Golden Guardian seemed this game is very good tracking of summoner spells and cooldowns right there. Being able to jump on both backline members of Cloud9 and kill them. And then Stixay having his, critically saving it from that Baron situation, knowing I'm already cut off, I'm going to die, doesn't waste them. So he has it in that fight to flash over the wall and then critically still be up to land his ultimate onto a fudge and finish off that last kill. It starts feeling like the last hope here for Cloud9 is now getting soul because it is a really powerful one here with the Hextech soul. If they can grab that, it really does. You know, erase a lot of the combat stats advantage. You know, the souls are worth thousands of gold in stats themselves. So we'll see if they're going to be able to do it. But Golden Guardians is showcasing. They have what it takes to dominate these fights. The Draven did not snowball. Their comp did not snowball. And Gori is being really annoying on the Blanc, still playing that shift build, still looking for the poke, the prod. Uh, he is Night Harvester, Shiv, and has that Lich being completed as well. Yeah. So just looking to constantly chunk Cloud9. And if their carries don't have flashes, you can't really play against the Cataclysm. And River has definitely been the MVP for Golden Guardians this game. Just using the Cataclysm to exquisite combos and timings as MNS is forced to use the Tibbers because he knows that River was looking for another engage. Fissure on the Fudge, he's got no Fudge. That Crocodile's dead. Perfect tipper out of Huhi there to catch him right on the end. Knocks him up, gets that kill after initially jumping onto Eminez, but you can just see how tanky the front line is. Talking about damage concerns when Eminez has fallen behind. You can see there is very little done to River, so they can kind of fish for these engages. Even if they're not super clean, they're not instantly punished by Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, R River is just walking straight at them. Berserker can't walk up and start autoing him, or he's going to be the one that gets ulted, and he's going to have to flash out. So Eminez just has to drop Tibbers really early on. They're trying to clear out this wave with the Tibbers, but it's not going to happen. And now with Fudge down, Cloud Nine has got to run here. No way they hold this inhibitor. Uh, Blabber is, I don't know if he's looking for a flank with these portals and they already lost the inhibitor tower, but they've gotten a lot of chunk down onto Gory. If he can look for it, but that's just the clone. And Blabber, does he look for Gory? He has flash, maybe a spectral maw. I think they were hoping to set up a TP play. You know, I'm not sure if he had a ward in pocket for a TP from Fudge who was respawning with that, but uh, not going to be an angle. You know, wants to at the very least threaten it. So wards were there. So if Golden Guardians overstay, we would have seen the Renekton flank come in to group up with Blabber and look to make something happen. That's a very uh, charitable interpretation. I think he was farming. <laughs> I think he said, my inhibitor is dead. They can't end the game. I'm going for wolves. He would have gone topside. Raptors are up. Blabber, hey, jungle saver camp. Blabber, I don't know. Blabber hates wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. He wanted that lane minion XP. Now Fudge might be in trouble. Still no flash once again. Gets the double slice and dice. Sven is here to provide him some extra healing and a getaway. But we have Baron live. Dragon Soul on the table for Cloud9 in 30 seconds. Cloud9 have to decide. Do they want to throw all their tools in for this Baron or just save it for the Dragon? They, they can't allow them to get Baron. I think if you get give them Baron for free, you're never going to get access to that Dragon. So Cloud9 going to try to make something happen. Berserker is way far forward by himself here, though. This is dicey. Does yes. have flash cleanse this time. He's got to be careful. I mean, he, it is taking a while for him to actually put damage into Licorice. It's one at a time. Blabber goes in for the steal, but it's secured by River. And the Cataclysm is going to seal MS in his doom. Berserker's still alive. Can he carry this fight? Does he have the damage for River's just frontlining it? Gory just dodges right past him and takes out Sven. And without Sven, there's no healing for Berserker. There's no Berserker. There's no way that Cloud9 wins the fight. Golden Guardians are answering back. Golden Guardians win the game at Baron, they have a mid wave they can meet up with, finally answering back against Cloud9. 10k gold lead, only 27 in. Cloud9 went all early game, and Golden Guardians had all the answers in this one. River playing an amazing Jarvan game, showcasing why he was so feared on this champion for so long on Dignitas. River popping the GA for good measure because he didn't even need it in that last fight. That's just how huge he was. And Golden Guardians finally answer back, showing Cloud9, you need to respect us this year. Golden Guardians continue their march up the standing, seven in three now, meeting Cloud9 in the middle, one to one this year as it is the second round. Robin though, very interesting development in the LCS. And that leaves EG alone in first now, right? You know, because they actually were able to get their wins, so they're alone in first place now at the top of the table.